Welcome back to Los Angeles. The Cube is live. I can't say that enough. The Cube is live. We're at KubeCon, Cloud Native Con 21. We've been here all day, yesterday and today and tomorrow, talking with lots of guests, really uncovering what's going on in the world of Kubernetes. Lisa Martin here with Dave Nicholson. We've got some folks. Next, we're going to be talking about a customer use case, which is always one of my favorite things to talk about. Please welcome Micah Coletti, the Principal Platform Engineer at CHG Healthcare, and Venkat Ramakrishnan, VP of Products from Portworks by Pure Storage. Guys, welcome to the program. Thank you. Happy to be here. Yeah. Happy to be here. So, Micah, first of all, let's go ahead and start with you. Give the audience an overview of CHG Healthcare. Yeah, so CHG Healthcare, we're a staffing company, so we sort of like a locum tenens. So our clients are doctors and hospitals, so we help staff hospitals with temporary doctors or even permanent placing. So we deal with uh, a lot of doctors, a lot of nursing, and, and we're, we, we're a combination of multiple companies, so CHG is the parent. So, and uh, yeah, we're, we're, we're known in the industry as one of the leaders in this, this field in providing uh, do, uh, hospitals with high quality uh, doctors and, and nurses. And uh, you know, our customer service is like number one. And one of the things our CEO is really focused on is now how do we make that more digital? How do we provide that same level of quality of service, but a digital experience that is rich for our I can imagine there was a massive need for that in the last 18 months yeah. alone. COVID definitely really raised that awareness up for us and the, the importance of, of that digital experience and that we need to be out there in the digital market. Absolutely, so you're a customer of Portworks by Pure Storage, we're going to get into that, but, but Venkat, talk to us about what's going on. The acquisition of Portworks by Pure Storage was about a year ago. Yeah. Talk to us about your VP of products, what's going on? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, first of all, I think it, I could not say uh, how much of a great fit for a Portworks to be part of Pure Storage. It's uh, uh, Pure itself is a very fast moving, large startup that's a dominant leader in the flash and data center space. And, you know, Pure recognizes the fact that Kubernetes is the new operating system of the cloud. Is is now how, uh, you know, it's kind of uh, virtualizing the cloud itself. And there is a you know a, a big burgeoning need for uh, data management in Kubernetes and how you can kind of orchestrate workloads between uh, your on-prem data centers and the cloud and back. So Portworks fits right into that story as complete vision of data management for our customers and. Uh, it's been phenomenal. Our business has grown as part of uh, being part of uh, Pure, and uh, you know we're looking at uh, launching some new products as well. And uh, it's all exciting times. So you must have been pretty delighted to be acquired as a startup by essentially a startup, because yeah. because I, although Pure has reached significant milestones in the storage business yes. and is a leader in flash storage, still that that startup mindset is there. Absolutely, so that's unique. That's not that's not the same as being acquired by a company that's been around for a hundred years seeking to revitalize itself. Absolutely. Can you talk a little bit about that aspect? Yeah, so I think, you know, uh, Pure's culture is uh, highly innovation driven and it's a very open, flat culture, right? I mean, it's everybody in Pure is accessible, you can easily have a conversation with folks and everybody has this learning mindset. And Portworks is and has always been the same way, right? So when you put these, these teams together, uh, we can create wonders. I mean, we, uh, right after the acquisition, just within a few months, we announced an integrated solution that Portworks orchestrates volumes and file shares in Pure's Flash products and then delivers as an integrated solution for our customers. And Pure has a phenomenal uh, uh, cloud-based monitoring and management system called Pure One that we integrated well into. Now we're bringing the power of all of the observability that Pure's customers are used to for all of the Portworks customers. And I've been super happy, you know, delivering that capability to our customers, and our customers are delighted. Now they can have a complete view, all the way from Kubernetes and app to the Flash. And I don't think any one company in the planet can even claim they can do that. Yeah, I think I think it's fair to acknowledge that Pure One was observability before observability was a word exactly. that anyone used regularly. Yep. So that's very interesting. Micah, talk to us about, obviously you are a customer, CHG is a customer of Portworks, now Portworks by Pure Storage. Talk to us about the use case. What, what was the compelling, was there a compelling event and from a storage perspective that, that led you to Portworks in the first yeah, place? Yeah, so uh, we be, they began this, our CEO basically came to the vision, we, we need to have a digital presence. We need to enhance this. And this was even before COVID. So they brought me on board and my, my manager, Reed uh, Glosser, he, we basically had this task to, how are we going to get out into the cloud? How are we going to make that happen? 
And we, we chose to uh, follow a very much a cloud native strategy. And the platform of choice, I mean, it just made sense with Kubernetes. And so when we were looking at Kubernetes, we were starting to figure out how we're doing. We knew that data is going to be a big factor, you know, um, being able to provide data. We're very much focused on a, an event driven. We're really pushing to event driven architecture. So we leverage Kafka on top of Kubernetes. But at the time, we were actually leveraging Kafka with uh, MSK down out in AWS. And that was just a huge cost to us. So I came on board. I had experience with Poreworks, a prior company before that. And I basically said, we need to figure out a great storage overlay. Uh, overlay. And the only way to do it is we got to have high performance storage. We got to have secure. We got to be able to back up and recover that storage. And the, the Poreworks was the right match. And that allowed us to have a very smooth transition off of MSK onto Kubernetes, saving us a significant amount of money uh, per month and just leverage that already existing hardware, that already existing compute memory, and just and, and, the, and move right to Portworx. Leveraging your existing investments. Exactly. Which is key. Very key, very key, so. So Venka, how common are the challenges that, that when you guys came together with CHG, how common are the challenges it's that actually you see yeah, that's, that's a great question. You know, this is uh, you know I'll tell you uh, the, uh, the the challenges that uh, Micah and his team are running into is what we see a lot in the uh, in the industry where uh, people pay a ton of money uh, you know to you know to to other vendors or you know especially in some cases use some cloud native services, but they want to have control over the data. They want to control the cost. And they want higher performance and they want to have, you know, there's also governance and regulatory things that they need to control better. So they want to kind of bring these services and have more control over them, right? So now we will work very well with all of our partners, including the cloud providers, as well as, uh, you know, on-prem and server vendors and everybody, but different customers have different kinds of needs and Portworx gives them that flexibility. If you are a customer who want, you know, have a lot of control over your applications, the performance, the latency, and want to control costs very well and leverage your existing investments, Portworx can deliver that for you in your data center. Right now, you can integrate that with Pure Splash and you get a complete solution. Or you want to run it in cloud and you still want to have, leverage the agility of the cloud and scale, Portworx delivers a solution for you as well. So it kind of not only protects their investment, it future proves their architecture. You get future proving your architecture completely. So if you want to tier to cloud or burst to cloud, you have a great solution that you can continue to leverage. Right? Michael, when you hear future proof, and I'm a marketer, so I always go, I love to know what it means to different people. What does that mean to you in your environment? My environment, uh, so future proof means, like one of the things we've been addressing lately, that's a, just a real big challenge, and I'm sure it's a challenge in the industry, especially with Kubernetes, is upgrading our clusters. Ability to actually maintain it. A consistent flow with how fast Kubernetes is growing. You know, they're they, they're out. I think EKS we leverage EKS, so it's like 121 or 122 now, and that effort to upgrade a cluster, it can be a daunting one. With Portworx, we actually were able to make that to where we could actually spin up a brand new cluster, and with Portworx, shift all our applications, services, data, migrate it completely over, Portworx handles all of that for us and stand up that new cluster in, in less than a day. And that effort, I mean, it, it would take us a week, two weeks to do. So not only man hours, the time spent there, but just the reliability of being able to do that and the cost. You know, instead of standing up a new cluster and configuring it and doing all that and spending all that time, we can just really, we move to what we call a blue-green cutover strategy and it, uh, Portworx is a, an essential piece of that. So, Venkat, is it fair to say that there are a variety of ways that people approach Portworx from a, from a value perspective in, mm -hmm. in terms of, I, I know that one area that you are particularly good in is the area of backups in this environment, but then you've got data management, and there's a third kind of vector there. What, what, what is the third vector? Yeah, it's, it's all of the data services. Data like, services. Yeah, like, for example, database as a service on any Kubernetes cluster, be it on your cloud or your uh, uh, on-prem data centers. Wh uh, which data, what kind of databases are you talking I mean, about? We're talking about anything from Redis, Kafka, Postgres, MySQL, you know, Consul. We are supporting, we just announced something called a Portbox data services offering that essentially uh, delivers all these databases as a service on any Kubernetes cluster uh, that, that you, a customer can point to. 
and lets them kind of get the uh, automated management of the database from day one to day three, the entire life cycle, um, you know, through regular Kubernetes kubectl experience, through APIs and SDKs, and a nice slick UI that they can, you know, just role-based access control and all of that, that they can completely control their data and their applications through it. And, uh, you know, that's the third vector of Portrait's offerings. Mike, a question for you. So, Portworx has been a part of Pure Storage. You've known it since, obviously, for several years before you were at CHG. You brought it to CHG. You now know it a year into being acquired by a fast-paced startup. Talk to me about the relationship and some of the, the benefits that you're getting with Portworx as a part of Pure Storage. Well, I mean, one of the things I, I you know, when when I heard about the acquisition, my first thing was I was a little bit concerned. Is it, is that relationship going to change? And when we were acquiring, when we were looking at adopting Portworx, one thing I would tell my management is, Portworx is not just a vendor that wants to throw a solution on you and provide some capability. They're a partner. They want to partner with you in your success, in your journey, in this whole cloud native journey to provide this rich digital experience in the for not only. Uh, our platform engineering team, but our dev teams, but also be able to really accelerate the development of our services so we can provide that digital portal for our end users. And that didn't change. If anything, that accelerated. That, that relationship did not change. You know, I came to Venkat with an issue we just were, were dealing with. He immediately got someone on a phone call with me, and so that has not changed. So it's really exciting to see that now that they've been acquired, that they still f are very much invested in the success of their customers and making sure we're successful. You know, it's not all of a sudden, I was worried I was going to have to do a whole different support process and it was going to go into a black hole. Didn't happen. They still are very much involved with their customers. Which and is that exciting. sounds kind of been kept similar to what you talked about with the cultural alignment. I've known Absolutely. Pure for a long time and they're very customer centric. Yes. Sounds like one of the areas in which there was a very strong alignment with Portworx. Absolutely, and Portworx, has always taken pride in being customer first company. Our founders are heavily customer focused. Uh, you know, they are aligned, they want, they have always aligned our, uh, the Portrix business to our customers' uh, needs. Now Pure is a company that's maniacally focused on customers, right? I mean, that's all, you know, Pure's founder cause and everybody care about. And so, you know, bringing these companies together and being part of the uh, Pure team, I kind of see how, uh, how synergistic it is. And you know we have you know that has enabled us to serve our customers customers even better than before. So I'm curious about the two of you personally in terms of your your histories. I'm going to assume that you didn't both just bounce out of high school into the world of Kubernetes, right? So like Lisa and I, you're spanning the generations between the world of say virtualization based on x86 architecture and virtualization where you're not, you don't have microservices, but you have a full-blown operating system that you're working with. Kind of talk about, you know, uh, Micah, talk, with you first, talk about what that's been like navigating that change. I mean, we're in the midst of that. Do you have advice for others that are navigating that change? Don't be afraid of it. You know, a lot of people want to, you know, I call it, we're moving from where we're uh, naming, we still have cats and dogs, they have a name, the, the VMs, either whether or not they're physical boxes or they're VMs, to where it's more like, I hate to say cattle, you know, it, it's, it's like we don't own the OS, and not to be afraid, afraid of that, because change is really good. You know, the ability for me to not have to worry about patching an operating system is huge. You know, where I can rely on someone like EKS and, and the version and allow them to, if a CVE comes out, they let me know, I go and I use their tools to be able to upgrade. So I don't have to literally worry about owning that OS. And containers is the same thing, you know, you, 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 you know, it's all about being fault tolerant, right? And, and being able to be change aware, you know, you can actually roll out a new version of a container, a base image with a lot of ease without having to go and patch a bunch of servers. I mean, patch night was hell. Yeah, I'm sorry if I could say that, but <laughs> it was a nightmare, you know, but this whole world has just been a game changer with that. So, so Venkat, from your perspective, you were coming at it, going into a startup, looking at the landscape in the future and seeing opportunity. Um, what, what, what's that been like for you? I guess the question for you is more something Lisa and I talk about, this concept of peak Kubernetes. Where are we in the wave? Is this, yeah. just, is this just the beginning? Are we in the thick of it? Yeah, I think uh, I would say we're kind of uh, transitioning from early adopters to early majority phase in the whole, you know, uh, crossing the chasm if I analogy, right? So 
Uh, I would say we're still at the early stages of this big wave that's going to transform uh, how infrastructure is built, apps, how apps are built and managed and run in production. Um, I think some of the uh, pieces, the, the key pieces are falling in place and maturing. Uh, there are some other pieces like observability and security, uh, you know, kind of edge use cases need to be, you know, they're kind of going to get a lot more mature. Um, and you'll see that uh, the cloud as we know today and the apps as we know today, they're going to be radically different. And, uh, you know, if you're not building your apps and your business on this modern platform, on this modern infrastructure, you're going to be left behind. Um, you know, I, my wife's birthday was a couple of days ago. I was telling this story to my, a couple of friends, is that I, are, I used another flowers delivery website. Uh, they missed delivering the flowers on the same day, right? So, and they told me all kinds of excuses. Then I just went and looked up a, you know, like DoorDash, which just delivers, uh, you know, and then I, you know, like your food, but there's also flower delivery in DoorDash, and I, do -do I DoorDash flowers to her. And I can track the flower delivery did she eat all them? the way. Oh, yeah. <laughs> she did not eat them. Okay, good. Yeah. That is she good. She did eat them. But my kids <laughs> love the chocolates, though, right? So, and you know, the, the case in point is that you cannot be, you know, building a modern business without leveraging the moral tool chain and modern tool chain and how the business is going to be delivered. And that thing is going to be changing dramatically. And those kind of customer experience, if you don't deliver, uh, you're not going to be successful in business. And Kubernetes is the fundamental technology that enables this. Containers is a fundamental piece of technology that enables building new uh, businesses, you know, modernizing existing businesses. And with 5G, it's going to be, there's going to be new innovations that's going to get uh, unleashed. And uh, again, Kubernetes and containers will enable us to leverage those. And so we're still scratching the surface on this. It's big now, it's going to be much, much bigger uh, you know, as, as we go into the next couple of years. Speaking of scratching the surface, Micah, take us out in the last 30 seconds or so with where CHG Healthcare is on its digital transformation. How is PortWorks facilitating that? So we're, we're right in the thick of it. I mean, we are, uh, we still have what we call the legacy. We're working on getting those, but I mean, we're really moving forward um, to provide that rich experience, especially with event-driven platforms like Kafka and uh, Kubernetes and partnering with uh, PortWorks is one of the key things for us with that and AWS along with that. But we're, and I remember I heard a talk and I can't, I can't remember the name, but he's, he talked about how, how uh, port, uh, Kubernetes is sort of like the 56K modem, right? You're, you're hearing it, so you, but it's got to get to the point where it's just there. It's just the high-speed internet and Kelsey Hightower, that's who it was. Oh, from Google. Great, yeah. great, yeah. yeah. And I really like that because that's true, you know, and that's where we're at, we're on that transition where we're, we're still early, it's still that 50, so you still want to hear note, you still want to do Cube CTL, you want to learn it the hard way and do all that fun stuff, but eventually it's going to be where it's just, it's just there and it's running everything, like 5G, I mean, stripped down, doing micro, you know, K8s, things like that, you know, we're going to see it in a lot of other areas and just proliferate and really ex accelerate um, the industry in compute and memory and storage and yep. services. A lot of acceleration. Guys, thank you. This has been a really interesting session. I always love digging into customer use cases, how CHG is really driving its evolution with Portworks. Venkat, thanks for sharing with us what's going on with Portworks a year after the acquisition. Sounds like all good stuff. Thank you. Thanks thank for you. having us. Thank it's you. been fun. Our thank you. pleasure. Thank you very much. All right. For Dave Nicholson, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching theCUBE live from Los Angeles. This is our coverage of KubeCon, CloudNativeCon 21.